Hi, in today's video I thought I would talk about how I sign my paintings and I have a painting that I recently finished and so I will start with that and then I will go through a few other options and it really kind of depends on um, what tools you might like to use but also uh, the colors in the area on the painting if they're darker or lighter and uh, maybe whether you do mixed media or not and so I will get uh, the cameras turned around here and I will show you how I sign my paintings. So this first painting is one that I recently finished for a customer. It was a commission painting and uh, I uh, wait until the end to make sure everything is the way that I want it and the client is happy and then I sign it. And so before I sign the painting I uh, will show you the tools that I use uh, most of the time. And I have a piece of paper here so you can just see the pens a little better. And these are generally available at a um, office supply store or uh, maybe purchase online. And this is a Uniball. And I have two versions. I have the Vision Needle and that has uh, a little bit of a smaller uh, tip to it. You might be able to see that. And then I also have one that says, it just says it's uh, Uniball Vision, and it's, they both say micro, so I think it's because it has the vision needle that the tip is a little different. Um, I think the micro without the vision needle is the ones I find most of the time in the office stores and uh, this one has a little bit of a, a wider uh, tip compared to the other. So I can open both and you can see hopefully that one is a little bigger. Um, they make similar marks. I think in general I just tend to like uh, this one better and uh, they are both waterproof and fade proof and I believe they're acid free. I think I looked that up um, and I will confirm that and write that in the notes if, if it's not acid free. So then because I like to use my full name, um, I write it out, but some people only like their initials. And the other thing about signing a painting is that in general, you don't want to put it too close to an edge because when you match your painting, if it's going to be matted, uh, it usually will come over a quarter of an inch or so and you just want to have it high enough. I usually like to use one of the two lower corners. I know there are some people that will kind of hide their signature and then there are others that um, their signature is in red or some other color that really stands out. And for me I would prefer to just have my signature there, but I don't want it to be too strong. And I always put NWS on mine, which means I'm a signature member of the National Watercolor Society. So then once it's signed, the other thing that I do is I also turn it over on the back and about in the middle of the paper, I will sign my name again and then I will put the title and I'll wait to sign it until I'm off camera just so that um, there's no possible issue of someone trying to use my signature. Um, so Waiting to Fly is the title of this painting and then I will also write uh, the month that it was completed and the year. And that way um, it's a little bit of a record on the back of the painting um, as to the title and when it was created uh, and if uh, the tag of, on the back of the painting ever got separated from the painting the information is still part of the artwork. So I'm going to move this and I will uh, just get my camera set up again and I will show you a couple other tools that I use. So I have some other options and uh, they are, uh, there's three of them and I am 
I don't use these very often, but every now and then I have an area that is dark that I want to sign in, and so I do have these available if I decide to use them. So um, generally I paint with transparent watercolor, and so I, I uh, want to keep the look of the transparency, but when you are doing a um, painting with a dark area and you want to sign down in that area, then I will um, possibly pull out some gouache. And what's nice about the gouache is that I can add some color from my watercolor palette of something that I've used in the painting, and I can sign um, using the gouache with a little bit of color from my watercolors mixed in with the gouache. So I tend to just start with the white gouache. You can buy gouache in colors and um, work with it that way as well, but I tend to just mostly go with the white. I'm going to clean an area on my palette and I can actually show my palette because it is very messy right now. I've been working on a painting and so I have lots of different colors out, a lot of dark colors too right now. And I'm still going with the painting so I may not want to clear everything off right now. And uh, then what I will do is just get out a little well, some of these tubes are extremely hard to open. So I'm just going to use my towel. There we go. And just squeeze a touch of the white gouache out on my palette. And uh, I don't want to put too much water in it because then uh, it will thin it enough that it won't quite work on the painting. And so on this bluer section, I am going to Maybe I'll add a little bit of my um, phthalo blue turquoise to the gouache so that it is a lighter blue. And then I can vary it. If I feel like maybe that's still way too light, I can come over and pick up more of the phthalo blue turquoise and I could use that, or I could even go into, I need a touch of water. I could even go into the end and throne that I have sitting on my palette, and this might be, see now that's pretty close in value, so I would maybe want to add a little more gouache, and yes, it's just kind of disappearing now, and See if that works. Now you do want enough water in your mix that when you go to sign you can get a smooth stroke. And it could literally be your initials. It wouldn't necessarily have to be your name completely written out. Um, so that's one option is to use gouache. And uh, then I do have some other dark areas up here I can show you the other option. And I had a painting where there was a dark red area on one of the corners and so I did that same thing with the gouache only I used some red watercolor in it so that it would um, tone it but not stand out too much. Uh, so for this one I'm going to just show you the next option which can be using uh, these paint markers and they are actually acrylic paint uh, which is water soluble um, but once it dries it's permanent and uh, so I have a white uh, paint marker here and I think there are several brands so this one's Painters is this brand and then this one is uh, from Craftsmart and so is this one and I don't know that one is better than the other they all have the same um, way of getting the paint going because of just how they work. So, pull, actually I can just use my piece of paper here. So it has this tip on it and you have to basically just press, ooh, and see that one just spurted out. Well, I'll leave it on there for now. Oh, and it is leaking. Okay, so I don't know about this one. I have not used this one before. One of the things I am going to do is 
see if I shake it up a little bit, if that makes any difference. And I may just get a paper towel under my, yeah, this one is really coming out. I have not had others do that. So I don't know if it's this particular marker or if it's something about the paint. Um, yeah, because I'm not seeing any paint. It's it's like the liquid that would be needing to be mixed up with the paint. I'm going to grab a paper towel and dry that up right quick. I'm just going to dab this. So I'll have to play with that particular marker because I'm not sure what's going on with it because I just opened it today. So I'll show you with these others. So this is a blue and again, it I, like I said, it depends on the colors in my painting, um, what the area color is, what I might use. And yeah, I tend to, well, <laughs> I've, this is not going very well. I've used these colors before. so. Now I'm going to get one that I can't get started because it doesn't have enough paint in there. I may have to pick a different one. All right. Let me pause. I'll be right back. Hold on. All right. So while I was looking for my other markers, I uh, quickly uh, checked. And I do not know. This may be an oil um, marker. So it may not be acrylic. I cannot see on here anywhere that it says for oil or that it is oil paint. Um, but when you are looking for these markers, just make sure you read the packaging and see if it says uh, acrylic or uh, oil painting. And then I did find that I do have an acrylic marker by PBO and this one is white and it does work because I did a test. So it is the same um, kind of tip where you press down and then once you've pressed, then you can write with it. And uh, so depending on how dark the area is, you may have to put your uh, color or your paint on there, let it dry, and then you may have to come back over it and increase uh, any part of it that you feel like is not quite dark enough. So that is a white. And this, again, is the PBO acrylic marker. And I will place down in my uh, video, under the video, the links for some of these items. And uh, those are affiliate links through Amazon. So if you are shopping on Amazon, you can use those. And I get a percent, um, a, a small amount back. Um, and it doesn't cost you anything more, but it does help my channel a little bit. And then I also have, and I will put the link for that, all of my normal watercolor supplies. Uh, I have a page on my website that shows all of the uh, different tools and things that I use and has affiliate links for those as well. Um, so then I have a green and a yellow. And so I'll just quickly show these. So I had already started them. And this area is probably a little too dark for that, if I were going to use the green, I would probably want to use it uh, in a lighter area, which for me, I would probably just opt for my black pin then, the uniball. And then I do have the yellow, so this will probably work a little better here. Um, it is still a little uh, too hard to read, maybe even more so on the camera. Here in front of me, it's not too bad but it's maybe darker than you might want. Okay, so that's an option that uses the acrylic markers. And then the final option that I have is uh, using uh, masking fluid. And so you can take masking fluid, and I'll just try this pen this time. Let's see if I can open my little container here. Now this is uh, Winter Newton colorless art masking fluid, but I always put my mask in a smaller container. And this is an old uh, film canister from its Fuji film. These work really well because they seal well. And uh, so I can put the masking fluid in there and it's, I'm not going to be exposing the whole bottle to uh, the air when I open it. And then this is a ruling pin. And these have become very popular to mask with. I don't use it very often, but what I would do with it is prior to let's see if I can get it started. Prior to doing my painting, I would sign with 
and this is going to be really hard to see on camera, um, sign with the ruling pin and the masking fluid so that uh, once it's dry, I can paint on top of it and then I can come back like I did up here and I um, painted on top of it and now I can remove the masking fluid. So this may be a little bit of a um, not quite as clean a um, signature as using a pen or possibly using the markers. Uh, so let me get that. Where is it? I'll get the masking fluid off of here. And this will leave the white of the paper. And like I said, my signature may not be as clean. You can tell I went back over this area a little bit and also a touch in there so it almost looks blurry. Um, so it would be a matter of doing it enough that you get comfortable using the tool you're using and uh, figuring out how you want to do your signature if you're going to do this method. And then uh, once you have the mask off of there, you can come back with a little bit of color and you could paint some color in there. So because I want this to stand out, I'm just going to use orange, which is totally what I would probably not use. I might use a blue or something in that area. But if you wanted your signature to stand out, then you could just come back and paint on the paper. And it is the final way to um, have your signature on your painting. And now, and this is a um, not really permanent way unless you were to paint with uh, watercolor and then spray your um, painting with a sealer uh, or, a var or varnish it or wax it. Um, and I have become a little more um, I don't know what to say. I, I, I want my signature to be permanent. I don't want it to be removable necessarily easily. And uh, if someone, um, you know, who knows if that would ever happen, but if someone were to try to remove my signature, um, it would be hopefully not um, easy to do or not doable. Um, and then the final way that I used to sign my paintings, which I don't anymore, would just be to use a pencil and sign it with a pencil. And, and that way it changed for me when I decided that I wanted my signature to be a little more permanent. And um, so just different options. The, um, the black ink pen from Uniball, the gouache um, that you can paint and change the color of, some of these acrylic markers and uh, different colors that options you have for those and then using uh, masking fluid and uh, some kind of a mask applicator to sign and then um, paint that area. So I hope this was helpful and uh, if you have other options of how you sign your watercolors please feel free to comment below and like I said I will put the links for these uh, different items if I can find uh, those things on Amazon. I will put them in the uh, show more area down below in the description. Thanks, and I hope you have a good day. Bye.